Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to a special episode of the Speared Science Podcast, episode 107, 8 or 6, one of those three. <laughs> uh, I'm joined by a guest I haven't spoken to for ages, uh, Luke Kidgel. Mate, thanks so much for having me on. It's been uh, so long since I last spoke to you. How have you been? Yeah, it's been a couple of hours, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's been almost a day. And when I say that, it's been about 12 hours. Yeah, it's because we were performing together last night. We, yes. can't even, we can't even do stand-up without each other now. Yes. Um, um, but yeah, I thought I would have you on the podcast because, uh, I don't know, we haven't done a podcast for ages where we can say cunt and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you're going on tour soon. And I am. Uh, the, the Melbourne Comedy Festival starts next week. Yes. So my show starts next Tuesday, if you're listening to this on the Sunday. Yeah, that's cool. So, so it's your that's your second hour? It's going to be my... What do people call it? The sophomore show. God, sophomore that's so show. American. Just call it your second show. I call it my sophomore show. You're a douche. Uh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> I am a fucking You're worker. like, oh, it's my sophomore hour. No... It's Bro, not. I'm the Kanye West of stand-up. It's my sophomore album. <laughs> my my fifth show Kanye is just going to be... Kanye West wasn't doing an 80-seater in his sophomore <laughs> show. No, my fifth show is just going to be me going, I am a god! Yeah. I am a god! And then your seventh show, Lewis is going to be running for president. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yes, I'm super excited about it. Um, it's the second show. And second show is the hardest to write. Yeah, definitely. Because your first show, you have your whole life to write, really. Your first show, you could start when you're 18. You could do it when you're 50. Literally. But the second show, you have it's the first time you've ever had a year to write a and show. And you've got to throw out everything. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, shit. i got to write. And I think it's daunting because I don't rem- remember how I wrote the first show. Yeah. Like, I was like... Oh, I just I got to the festival and I had an hour of jokes because I'd just been I hadn't, hadn't been trying to write a show I'd yeah. just been like doing stand up for fun and being like oh this is funny I should say this on stage yeah. and I had an hour of that and then when it becomes a bit serious you know people are coming to the shows you mm. know fans are going to come and watch it you feel like it's real. Th- there's more. There's real, and there's an obligation to then churn out a better hour the next year. Yeah, that's, that's and the other that thing. is daunting, which it doesn't help creativity. Yeah. So that's the hardest struggle to get through. But once you overcome the fact that yeah. it's just the same, and you're just writing jokes, then it starts. Yeah, to Yeah, like the only way to write to write a show is to not have in your head that you're writing a show, which is impossible. But that's what, how you have to think. Like you yeah. can't. You can't ever think, I need to write an hour. Uh, You're never going to get an hour. You're going to get two minutes of shit and then give up, which is what I did for about two or three months last yeah. year. I was like, oh, i got to write an hour. And then as soon as I was like, you know what? I'm just going to write shit that I think's funny. Yeah. And then it came to me like really easily. Yeah, you just yeah you can't you can't force shit. But the second show, I think uh, I've been seeing your, your new stuff. I think you've, you've definitely topped uh, this year. Well, um, it's not hard because if you're a better comedian. Yeah. It's not even like I've tried extra hard to write yeah. a better show. I mean, I guess I have, but, like, I'm just better, so the shit that yeah. I'm writing is better. I was reading through, like, my past jokes, and even the ones I've been putting out online lately, Yeah, and I'm just like, oh, nah. <laughs> like, I've, yeah. like, even though they they were good and they yeah. were my best jokes at the time, I feel like I'm above that now. Yeah, because well, yeah, I do that as well. Every time I'm about to start work on the next hour, I go through every joke I've ever written because you write so many jokes that you yeah. just never perform because sometimes you'll go through and you'll find premises that are so funny, but when you came up with the idea for the joke, you weren't good enough as a stand-up to make that into a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'll come back to it and you'll be like, oh, I know how to do this now. You do this all the time because yeah. Lewis thinks of fucked up things. Yeah. And it takes about a year to work out how to say that to <laughs> other humans without being punched in the head. Yeah. At an open mic room. Because, like, you'll say you'll... You often attack big, broad ideas, like, say, feminism, right? Yeah. You're a straight, white male yeah. getting up in an open mic night telling it like it is to girls with little front fringes in <laughs> Brunswick, right? Yeah. And there's going to be pushback just yeah. f- just from... you. Don't, they won't even let you get to the joke. Yeah. The problem is with open mic rooms, if you go, so girls, and then they go, oh, fuck yeah, yeah you're yeah, white, yeah. you're straight, you're male, yeah. I'm not listening, right? Yeah. So often it takes you especially six months of just 
pondering in the back of your mind for six months, just going, how am I going to do this yeah. without getting put in jail? Yeah. And then... <laughs> it's not even like, how can I make this funny? It's like, how can I let them... let? How can I make them let me talk about yes. this? How, how can I give at least by myself 30 seconds to explain yeah. the joke? And then they go, oh, he's funny. Because so often my jokes start off with, Fucked up sentence. Yeah. And here's I the I mean, rest you've got... I don't want to give it away, but you've got a new joke that involves pedophiles and yeah. pedophilia, right? <laughs> and I saw you do that for the first time and the audience just... <gasps> like, not even <laughs> laughed. You just came out, said this line about pedophiles and everyone just went, thing I... And I knew the bit, so I was yeah. like, no, nah, guys, it's fine. Give him a chance! Give him a bit, like, but this lady next punched. to me was just like, oh my god, you can't say that. <laughs> like, well, he already <laughs> fucking did, so deal with it. But yeah. I guess I don't... I don't traditionally like. I don't have that problem that you mm. do at open mic rooms because I don't like m- what I generally gravitate towards naturally is just random shit. Like yeah. I got a bit about going to twenty first birthday parties. Yeah. Uh, my mum thinking uh, mistaking me in a crime stoppers ad. And there's parts in the joke that mm. get a bit edgy or a bit but, whatever. Yeah, the but the premise premises, is never fucked. I'll just throw in like a Nazi joke in the premise, like a yeah. Nazi joke about my mum. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I'll throw in a fuck joke, yeah. but in the context of something that's really PG and or M-rated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Adam Sandler would probably have a... Th- okay, I'm not doing Adam Sandler bits, but... <laughs> you know what I mean? You're really selling yourself. Yeah. Here. Hey, have you seen Adam Sandler? Have you seen Grown Ups 2? Well, <laughs> you'll love my show. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you you will. Yeah, your stuff is just naturally the, the premises are silly up, but then I'll throw in mm. shit. And cause I might throw in like a swastika gag yeah. in like a ah, and I do it in a way that's like even people who are like on a yeah. date go, he's a silly boy, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I I tend to get away with more things because I don't come out of the gates. Like and you and yeah. you as well. You're in a leather jacket. You're six foot eight. Yeah. You're already scaring the shit out of me. And then as soon as you start talking about pedophiles, I lean to the person next to me. Is he one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that is. Uh, I don't know. It is the the problem that, that you have. But I think I don't know. It, it all comes down to. I've always thought that the the more dangerous an idea is, the better a comedian you need to be to pull it off. Yes. So. Like so, that's like some some guy at the moment, he's he might be going to jail in the UK for telling a, a joke. Really? You probably seen the yeah. You probably seen the video. It, it went viral. Like I think it was a couple of years ago. The the, this, the rape one. No no. Oh. This guy um taught his girlfriend's dog how to see Kyle. So he would say see Kyle and the dog would raise its yeah. paw. Um, just to piss as a prank to piss off his girlfriend. So he's like, "Oh, my girlfriend is always talking to me how cute my dog is." So I thought I would turn it into the ugliest thing ever. And that's yeah, it, right. Not the funniest thing in the world. But did but... he actually teach his dog to do that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah, teaching a dog anything is impressive. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so he's got, got clips so, of it going so like many this. smackos just to get the dog to. Yeah. Um, no but, one screenshot that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's he's been charged with grossly offensive uh, conduct, and he just got found guilty, and he could do up to six months in jail for it, which is crazy, especially considering there's photos of Prince Harry dressed up as a Nazi at a fancy dress yeah, party. Yeah, but he's got wait, really. Yeah, Prince Harry's the best man. <laughs> <laughs> He's the loosest royal. Yeah. He's done a nudie run in Vegas. Yeah. And now he's like about to get married in front of the Queen. Mm. What a what a fucking legend. I know. He is he is a proper but, seeker. As if you can go to jail for that. Yeah, it's it's crazy and and you know, it's it's this whole thing of I think that joke wasn't very funny, but there's no way you should go in jail for it cuz I think we you always have to regardless of of how someone's attempt has come out, you have to stand up for the attempt, which is the attempt was to make people laugh. Yeah, but... I mean, he could have made up that his dog... The fact that he actually taught his dog how to be a Nazi is fucked up. He could yeah. have said, I taught his dog to be yeah. a Nazi. Um, like, a friend of ours has a similar joke teaching his dog, uh, Kala Kalafala, who is, uh, a, a, like, Muslim. He, t- oh, he has yeah. a joke about teaching his dog to be Muslim, to be yeah. a soldier of God. Yeah. And that's... Almost the same thing, but Carla gets away with it because he's Muslim. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Because he, he was born in Egypt. 
Yeah, so, that's true. It probably would be better if like, this guy actually was, was a Nazi. Yes. So if he was a fascist, <laughs> then I think the joke would be celebrated. <laughs> yeah. If Hitler made that joke, everyone would love it. That's what you're saying. Yes. I think Hitler should have made the joke. That's that's my point. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so what what else have you... Where are you going on, on this tour? So I'm going to... Uh, the starting off in Melbourne, yeah. which is I don't want to do that next year. I always start off in Melbourne. Actually, no, last year I started off in Newcastle. I did yeah. my first show in Newcastle. Uh, then, so this year I'm starting off in Melbourne. Then I'm going to Adelaide, Perth. Mm. Then, Cam- no, the Newcastle, Canberra. Yeah. Then Brisbane, Sydney. Oh, that's good. You're ending on a big one. I'm as ending on the ending biggest in show. Canberra. No, I'm ending the Sydney show. I, I've booked a theatre, which sick. is daunting. Because uh, last year I started at the Sydney show two or three weeks before the show. Yeah. And then I, that's not really enough time to add a new show, mm. so I probably could have sold more. And I was like, oh, well, this year I just went balls deep and booked a venue three times the size <laughs> as last year. Yeah. And now I'm shitting myself. But uh, it's already like, yeah, almost half sold, so it's cool. Yeah. Uh, it's cool that people want to come out uh, to the shows because I've already sold more tickets than last year there, which means new people are coming. Yeah. So that's, that's, the, that's best the best shit that you're yeah. growing. Um, and same with Newcastle. Like, all the shows, actually, it's, it's great. And I've added a show in Canberra. I didn't do Canberra last year. Yeah, Canberra's um, good. I, I came with you to Canberra last year. Yeah, and Canberra's, Canberra's good, but... Well, the shows are good. Fuck, I, Canberra's the most a boring shit place hole. on, on well, the Well, we stayed in Queanbeyan, which yeah. I think we may have talked about in the podcast before. I don't think we've talked about this. The week after we came back from Queanbeyan, yeah. I was watching the news, and we were going to this Caltex... Yeah. Every single day, because there was literally Just no a service station. That was actually the only place. Not even, not even the only th- thing. It was actually the only place we could get food as well. Yeah, there was no supermarket. So it was we were just as fucking petrol station. Literally living off drumsticks and meat pies <laughs> for like a week and like cornettos and shit, just because yeah. there was nothing else to eat. And we, I guess we met most of the staff who were working there. Yeah. And we got back from Queenbin a week later. It was horrible. I was watching the news. And the, one of the staff members had been stabbed to death the week after <laughs> we were there. And I was like, holy shit. We were joking about that stuff. We were like, oh, we were, this is totally the place where you would get stabbed. And yeah. we were fucking right. I know. And then we didn't realise that we were staying in like the shithole place until we got on stage. Yeah. And I think I said in my set, just off the cuff, wasn't trying to be funny, in a joke, I was like, so we're staying in a place called Queenbian and... And the audience just burst out laughing. Yeah. Like it was the funniest thing ever. Like, ha, and I was ha like, you have to stay there. And I was like, oh, is that the shithole? And they were like, yeah. Like, why would you stay there? And we were like, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't book the accommodation. I think it was actually because accommodation in Canberra is so expensive because of how many politicians stay there because it's like the yeah. political capital of Australia. Accommodation is so expensive because... The government pays for yeah, it. Everyone's there fucking everything's their work just colleagues. so expensive. <laughs> so I worked out that it was actually cheaper to to stay in a shithole and get like a, a fifty dollar Uber. Yeah. three times that was still cheaper than staying in a shit hotel in the city. And that was another thing. We we're there for like three days. So and we weren't staying in the city. So we couldn't do anything because no. it would cost us fifty bucks every time to get into the city. Yeah. So we hung her out. And we walked around Queenbian, just the houses. Yeah. We were like, "Oh, that's a front porch." It was the nice. fucking worst. <laughs> it was so shit. But um, if you're watching and you're from Canberra, please come. <laughs> um, because yeah, it's always a risk putting on a show in a place that you had never been to for the yeah. first time. Because you didn't go to Canberra for your third year, mm. and I guess I've. I had a, 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 I've been put given the opportunity to have the radio show and stuff, and to tour there with you. Mm. So I thought, ah, uh, I'll do it. But now, <laughs> I mean, I didn't actually announce it, and then I announced it two weeks later because yeah. everyone cracked their shits at me. I announced my tour, and everyone's like, "Why are you coming to Canberra?" And then I put on a show at Canberra, and I got about a hundred, like hundreds of messages. Yeah. Why aren't you coming to Canberra? Put tickets on sale. Like, first night, 10 people buy tickets. <laughs> I I'm fucking like, hate that what shit. What the fuck? You told me to come. Like, yeah, bro, I'll be there. I'm bringing all my friends. Oh, yeah. but I'm not going to come, though. Yeah. It's the fucking... They that's, just yeah. want you to be in their town. I know. Like, people just want the idea of you. Oh, yeah, Luke, like, Luke's in town. I know. It's it's crazy. that Because that shit happened to me when I booked Canberra. Yeah. It's for three years in a row. People were like, why aren't you coming to Canberra? Why aren't you coming to Canberra? I finally put on a show... 
and uh, could only sell 100 tickets. And I was yeah. like, I know at least 500 people were like, come to Canberra. Yeah. And I'm like, I did, you fucking I'm cunt. looking at the numbers on my Facebook page. I know I could sell at a show there. Yeah. And everyone's begging me to. So I was like, hey, guys, I'm doing you a favour. I'm coming to the Canberra. Yeah, you sucked in. I'm not coming. Yeah. And then <laughs> like, you get there, you've spent all this money on flights, accommodation, <laughs> and a venue. And people go, oh, I think I'm busy that night, man. I'm just <laughs> fucking washing my hair that night. But like, and then there's no way you can be busy in Canberra. No. What are you doing? What are you busy doing? <laughs> Con- contemplating suicide. It's like, oh, sorry, man, I need to stab someone at a service station. Yeah. I can't make it. <laughs> and then, like, after I announced Canberra, everyone from Tasmania went, "Oh, where the fuck are you coming to Tasmania?" I'm like, "No, nah, don't want to hear Fool it." Me once. I'm like, "I'm not coming. You're <laughs> not gonna rock up. Don't pretend like you've got to show up." <laughs> I might come next year if you keep pleading. Yeah. So I'm sorry, people in Tasmania, but you know what? If you want me to come to Tasmania, don't come to me and say, come to Tasmania. Harass the people in Canberra (laughs) to buy tickets to my show, (laughs) and then I might fucking think about it. (laughs) Yeah. Although sometimes the opposite works as well. Like, I did a show in Newcastle, and nobody wanted me to come to Newcastle. I didn't get any messages. I got, like, maybe That's what I did last year. And then I I went to Newcastle, and I sold out two shows. Which yeah. Is, and I was only planning on doing one. I sold out so many that I did another one. Well, by that logic, maybe I should come to Dubbo. Because no <laughs> one wants me to come there. Yeah, well, I I've might, never I'm... got a message going, Bro, <laughs> come to the mines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to Afghanistan next. Because I've had no one hit me up. Yeah. Um, can we please talk about you almost fucking killing me the other night? I almost killed Lewis, guys. You yeah. almost lost your weekly podcast. Mm. Mm. Fucking so dog. I was. We were driving around. There was heaps of roadworks, right? Just to, just before Luke tells the story, this would have been by far the shittest fucking way to die ever. <laughs> it would have been like at the funeral, like no one. I don't know, people would have been sad, not because of the mourning the death. People mm. would have been sad that these are the circumstances that we both would have died in. Yeah. Now, we were driving uh, back to the city or something, and then I couldn't get through this way because there was roadworks, so I was shitty, and I was like, oh, there fuck was it. There roadworks everywhere, and Luke was trying to find a place to do, a, to do a U-turn, and he tried three different places, couldn't get a U-turn. Yeah. And then I got a U-turn eventually, and I was like, thank God, and... I was dry, I knew I had to turn left at either the next one or the one after, right? Yeah. And then I was, and we're going. This is like an eighty-kilometer road. We're going down. I was like, I think it's this one. We were and, on a highway. And there was a sign that said no left turn. And I was like, oh fucking road works. Fuck this. I could, and I could see on the road that there were no cars on it. There was no. Truck. This is literally what Luke did, right? <laughs> we're going down the road. He sees the no left turn, and he goes. <laughs> he says, oh. No left turn, and then goes, my name, Jeeve, (laughs) turns left into a three-lane, one-way fucking road into oncoming traffic. Then he had to swerve quickly left even more (laughs) into the exit of a Hungry Jack's drive-thru. Into a drive-thru, and then pull this, like, three-point turn to then get out, and I got honked and shit. But my my last words would have been, my name's (laughs) Jeeve. That's fucking retarded. That would have been the last thing I ever heard was Luke going, oh, no left turn. My name, G. <laughs> oh, man. And I felt so bad. Like, I dropped Lewis off. You scared the shit out of me. And I was me. driving home and I was like, fuck. I like, because I, I, if I do that shit by myself, I'm like, oh, it's my fault. But I'm like, it's not really, it's not fair doing that to other people in the car or whatever. And that was so stupid, man. It was the dumbest thing I've ever done, driving a car. <laughs> if it says no left turn, guys, don't turn left. And don't fucking say my name's yeah. Jeff if you're going to, because <laughs> that's the last thing your mate will hear before he's fucking brain dead. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, my name's Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so sorry about that, guys. I almost killed your boy, Lewis. Um... Mm. So yeah, what's been happening on this podcast? I haven't been on for a while. What, 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 fill me in, catch me up. What has been happening? Fucking, dude! I like, I've just been talking about. I heard that shit about the guy being gang, oh the chick being gang banged at sushi train. That was the last I popped yeah. my head into this podcast. Yeah, there hasn't been any gang bangs yet. Oh um, really? No, no. Four weeks without Not... a gang bang. Well done, guys. I know. <laughs> it's pretty pretty unique for my podcast. But uh, last week we had uh, a girl with a girlfriend whose girlfriend was in the closet, um, 
and they were both in high school and her girlfriend was acting this big email. I've got it up here. Mm. A whole bunch of problems that... But... Uh, so I gave her some nice advice. I said, you know, just... Obviously being in the closet is hard and just try and talk to her and all this kind of stuff. I've got an update email here. Wait, so she's in the closet but she wants to date a girl in her class? No, no, no. Oh. They're two girls are both in the closet but they're dating each oh. other. In the same cool. school. Yeah. So she's like, oh, she's acting really weird around me. She doesn't want to show affection at school, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know what to do. So I said, oh, you just need to talk to her. I got an update email. I mean, um, that's so... That sucks. Like, that's yeah. so sad that it's 2018 and yeah. you can't feel like you can just kiss your girlfriend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, like me and my girlfriend were dating in high school and we wouldn't fucking make out at school. No, but, but people were aware. But after school, like, if we were heading different ways, we'd yeah. be like, all right, see you tomorrow, I'll see you later tonight, and well, like, just a peck on the lips and yeah. part ways. And no one was like, fucking heterosexuals? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Which sucks. Yeah, Because, I, don't, I mean, I don't think, I think, I don't think people would be like, oh, fucking homos. I don't think people would do that. No, I, I, don't, th- I don't think so either. I don't think you would get judged, but obviously it's a scary thing. Oh, no, thing. actually, I think she mentioned, oh, she that, mentioned that she someone, has got judged. someone else got bashed for it. What a piece of shit. Yeah, because someone... Yeah, yeah, we don't want to get bashed. It's happened at my school before. Oh, my God. Um, it's fucking legal now. Get the fuck over it. Yeah. But anyway, I gave her some advice. And I said, you need to talk to her and figure out when you can hang out afterwards. And I got an update email. Hi, Cunt. It's Carly. She broke up with me. So, my advice obviously wasn't the best. So, you gave advice to what? Talk to her? Yeah. I don't know. But on the hindsight, <laughs> knowing that and looking back on the email, it looks like that's Things. why she was acting So, yeah, weird. she wasn't... Your girlfriend wasn't being weird because... Yeah, she's you probably being weird because you were trying to break up, which sucks. But, you know, everyone goes through a fucking high school breakup, you know, on your way to normalcy, apart from the fact you can't fucking tell anyone why you're sad. In which year eight, Sorry I dated a girl for three weeks and I got uh, dumped outside of 7-Eleven. So, you're mm. not going to get worse than that. I dumped a girl when outside I was in year 7-11? seven. No, no, oh. over the phone. Fucking wrecked it. What? Brutal. Over the phone? Yeah. That's cold. I know. And, uh, and she was like, no, what can I do? I said, there's nothing you can do. And I hung up on it. And then I, <laughs> and then I went and I played some <laughs> but, Rune- but you could call me back. <laughs> and I went and played some RuneScape. And I was like, fuck, take that, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> For the people just listening to the audio, Lewis just dabbed as he said, take that, bitch. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you cut loose. That's right. That is how you do it. Hey, Dab on it, man. i got to put my laptop on charge. Entertain them. Um, guys, it's just Luke now on the podcast. Um, I mean, what should I talk about? Should I talk about... Do I have any stories to tell? I don't know. Oh, you know what we were talking about yesterday? What were we talking about? There was something really interesting. We should talk about that on the podcast tomorrow. Yeah, because it was too fuck for radio. Mm. Nah, guys, I've forgotten. Yeah. I mean... See, that's the problem. If you don't... When you're doing so much fucking content, if you don't write it down, you just forget it because you're thinking about the next thing. Yeah, we just move on. That was probably something... Nah, I, I've got no idea. I'll think of it like as soon as the podcast gets turned off. I do believe it was sex-related, as usual. Yeah. Um, we we just always talking about sex. Um, Alright. <laughs> so... Not with each other, just... Yeah, other people. Um, Do you have anything else that you want to talk about? Should we do miscellaneous bit in the end? <laughs> I mean, I want to talk about something else just to prolong miscellaneous bit at the end. I mean, we could do anything. We could talk about... I mean, I I don't really have anything else to talk about other than I'm coming around Australia again. I'd love to see all you guys at the shows. Um, And, yeah. What have I got in my phone here? I had notes that I wanted to talk about. Where are we? This podcast sucks, man. I don't know why people... You know what's even said? I get if you listen to this and you can just tune out right now, you can go run some errands or something. Mm. But people who are watching this, like this podcast is filmed. Yeah. You're just watching Lewis right now scroll through his phone. I mean, panic. I mean, this is... You know what's even better than that? I just looked through my phone and there's nothing that I wanted to talk about. (laughs) (laughs) So you just made that up? No, no, there is stuff in there. There's just... I've already talked about all of it. So, sorry right. for wasting your time, everyone. Yeah, My right. apologies. Well, fine. I guess we have to do miscellaneous bit at the end. I was about to say there's nothing worse than miscellaneous bit at the end. But then again, us just sitting here doing nothing is probably pretty shit. It's so. pretty close. Yeah. Um, yeah, so last week I was talking about... Uh, you know the, that ad campaign of people calling... Telling people not to call triple zero unless it was an emergency? 
Uh, no. It's been. We were talking about. The oh other day. yeah, yeah, we were. Yeah, no, that's. But that's a good rule, because they get so well, many dumb is, calls. I know it is good, but I, I was shocked that that's even needed. I thought everyone knew that. Like, only call this number if someone's dying. Yeah, not many people are prank calling triple zero, but people evidently are. People are like, I've got a cold, I'll call a fucking ambulance. It's crazy. But um, I was talking about that, and uh, just a have paramedic a, just messaged have a fucking me. fucking bloody codril if you bloody got the sniffles, all right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so a paramedic messaged me, and he said, he was like, oh, do you want me to tell you about a few stupid calls I've been sent on? And I was yeah. like, fuck yeah. <coughs> Um, so he goes, hey, Lewis, my name is Leon. I'm a paramedic in the rural Midwestern US. So these will be fucking full on retarded. Um, I've had a few stupid calls I've been on. And one to one that to me is a funny story you might want to hear. The two that stick out most to me was one. I was once called to a woman in her mid 40s who wanted us to come and evaluate a bruise on her leg. <laughs> the, bruise did, the bruise did not hurt. And she had been fallen on that exact spot a few days ago. She knew it was a bruise, but just wanted paramedics to confirm. <laughs> Wait, doesn't it cost like a thousand dollars? Yeah. To get that, like, she would be laughed at if she went to her local GP. Oh, especially in America too, because their health system's yeah. fucked. Yeah. If you did that in America, you, I mean, you. You wouldn't even go to your doctor with a bruise. No. You'd be like, harden the fuck up, walk it off. And she knew it was a bruise. She just wanted them to confirm. So did she just want a bit of attention? That's fucking nuts. Who's that lonely? <laughs> <laughs> She's obviously just doing it for companionship and sympathy. That's nuts. Uh, second one. <clears throat> I was once called to a 20-ish year old woman who had stubbed her toe on her table. She wanted to go to the hospital to have it looked at. The toe did not hurt, was not red, and had no deformities, bleeding, or open wounds. Hey, I'm fine. What do you reckon? What the... F These are all just the same. These That's are all crazy. people who are like... Uh, there's got to be a word for it. Retarded? Yep. <laughs> nah, but like, there must be a word for like having an ambulance fetish. Yeah. Maybe they like the fact that they... Just, I think it's some people skilled. just like attention, man. Like or they, they want like people empathy. to care about them. Yeah, they want empathy. Yeah. Uh, the problem f with with calling us for stupid shit like this is that our county only has two ambulances. If we go to pointless calls like this and someone else has a real problem, <clears throat> they could call and be left waiting because we are dealing with something that absolutely does not need emergency medical attention. I can't believe that they even got one it. paramedic would have multiple stories. Like you'd, I would think that it'd be like a shock horror story. Like I've only got like one really bad heckler story. And yeah, I've been same. doing comedy for three years. Yeah, same. But for paramedics to have multiple stories of idiots calling for no reason is nuts. <coughs> and then... <coughs> sorry. And then the super part is about it that they have to then waste, like, taxpayer money yeah. advertising to fuckwits to not call them. Yeah, because that's more of money. Better money will be spent going, hey, if you're in an emergency, please call us. That's what we're here for. Yeah. That's a more productive ad because then at least it makes the community feel safe. Yeah, judging by how how much I saw those ads but and billboards, those they ads, could have bought another ambulance. Yeah, those ads are just like, Oi, dickheads, stop. <laughs> Don't call me, you fucking idiot. You're fine. Um, as for the funny story, this will be great. Uh, I was home one those day... Those ones were pretty funny. So yeah. this one's going to be good. This will be fucked. I haven't read this one. Um, I was home one day off duty when my first responder pager went off for a potential stroke in a nearby town. I rushed to the call and showed up with a police officer and another first responder. The patient was in the bathroom, passed out, leaning against the door. We had to push the door hard and knock the patient to the other side to gain access to the bathroom. Once in the bathroom, we found the patient unresponsive, so we lift him off the toilet and placed him on the floor. I was in the bathroom next to the toilet and noticed an absolutely monster shit in the toilet. <laughs> well, I hope he hasn't shit himself into a stroke. <coughs> I didn't think it would be appropriate to flush the toilet with the guy's wife in the next room, so I just closed the toilet lid. I do my assessment, place my airways, and assist the ambulance when they arrive. I never once flush that toilet. Since I'm one of the few ALS providers in our area, I don't know what that is, I rode with the ambulance crew to assist them as this guy was in bad shape. I later learned that he had a major hem hemorrhagic stroke and died... <laughs> 
How is this funny? This guy just died taking a shit. What gets me? <laughs> Your fans are fucked up. Uh, he, here's, I've detected the funny part. What gets me is that this guy's wife went home after he died, and the first time she opened their toilet to do her business, she was greeted by her husband's last monster shit. <laughs> Anyway, that's all I have. Hope you have a shitter one than that dead guy. Oh my god. <laughs> you know what else is the problem with people who are paramedics? They're so just immune <clears throat> to like people dying and shit. It's that actually part of it. For the that, job. that's just like like workplace banter. That's like yeah. water cooler chat. Oh yeah. yeah, did you hear oh, mate? Bloody I was watching the X Factor and then they move on from like reality TV chat and they go, Oh, the other day, mate. Boat was taking a monster shit and he died. died. And everyone's like, oh, that's great. Yeah, All right, mate. We'll, we'll meet back here at 11 tomorrow. And no. It is that's pretty funny, up. though. You know, because you know what? I, you know, you read those stories every now and then, like of a really old guy dying, and then the next Valentine's Day for the next 10 years, his wife gets flowers because he knew he was going to die. Yeah. So that's like how she remembers him because that's yeah. what he left behind. Whereas this guy left behind a gigantic <laughs> shit in the toilet and she had to flush it. My husband's last poo. Do you reckon she flushed it right away? She left it there. Like as a memory? Yeah. <laughs> she buried it with him. <laughs> she fished it out with a net. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in his urn. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, I thought of something. I thought of one of the things we wanted to talk about. Yeah. Um, the story of the girl on the train sucking her. Oh yeah, own that's dick. what it was. Um, should I, we get Mike in? He wanted to talk about. Mike that. has been talking about this all week. Yeah, if you guys. Oh, Mike. Oh wait. Hey, Mike. Mike. Do you want to talk about the the? Come in here. We're doing a podcast. Um. Yeah. So we. we I just we, don't want to yell it out into the hall. I've got the news story here. Hey guys, Mike. Michael, welcome to my podcast. This is Radio Hello. Mike, everyone. Would you like to talk about the guy getting sucked no. off on the train? I'd fucking love to. <laughs> Mike's been <laughs> talking about it all week. All right. We haven't pull been able to chair, talk man. about it on radio. Yeah, so move over, Luke. Right. We'll pull up Thanks, a chair guys. for Mike. This is... Thanks for letting me on the podcast. Lewis. No worries, mate. Only if you tell everyone to buy tickets to Luke's show. All right. Later. Oh, buy tickets to Luke's show, memoirs of a white guy. That's that his podcast, oh, <laughs> Buy tickets to Luke's show. It's called Because I Can... Uh, I'll be there, I'll be doing a signed meet and greet. No, you won't! Uh, <laughs> nah, I said he could do it one night. Do, yeah, so the <laughs> night I'm there, I'm doing a signed meet and greet and a Reddit AMA, which will be on the Luke Kidgel Reddit. Which, does that exist yet? No, it doesn't. Someone exist. make the Luke Kidgel Reddit, then we'll do an AMA. <laughs> Uh, I um, have a Reddit actually. I uh, will do it on the Lewis Spears. No Can one I do an AMA on your Reddit. No one goes there. It's got like six subscribers, right, message, and the last post was like two years message ago. Message Lewis if you want to do an AMA with me on Reddit, and, and we'll I'll set say it up, no. and I'll be doing a meet and greet at Luke's show. Why did you get him? I am immediately regret. This. Where am I talking? Where's the mic? The mic's on top of you. All right. Okay. So the news story. This is how it read. A woman who was caught on camera allegedly performing oral sex on a man while travelling on a New South Wales train claims she has no memory of the incident. (laughs) Dude, we sat before the show yesterday for about 20 minutes trying to figure out how we could talk about it. Can you get up the article that you were reading the quotes from the other day? (laughs) Mike was reading us the best quotes. What I want to discuss is, how do you suck it? Like, how many dicks is she sucking on trains... That she has no memory. She's like, oh, I'm, she's trying to like. We're this, on the work Wi-Fi. This is gonna get me fired. <laughs> no, but this is this is her mind. Yeah. Just like, hey, so um, the police are like got her in. Like, so she sucked his dick on the train, and she's trying to filter through all the dicks that. Why she did I do that? So how the, do you have no memory? So according to the article, the woman caught on camera performing oral on a man while riding a train told police she did it because it was her birthday and it was something <laughs> she'd always wanted to do. But here's the catch. It turns out it wasn't her birthday. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense at all. So what's they checked her ID and they're like, this isn't a birthday blowy. Oh, yeah, what's her name? What's her name? Chantel. <laughs> because of course it is. 34-year-old Chantel. This happened in Wollongong. You know the, what, the funniest part of it was the guy, right? After the act occurs, the guy washed his dick off with coke. Like he poured on coke the train. And, he poured coke. I thought he did that before. Dick. No, he did it. No, not to lube it up, to clean it up. <laughs> He's poured coke all over <laughs> his dick. That'd just make it sticky. I know. That'd make it stickier. And the police thought it was vomit. It was coke. And cum. 
Oh wait, so the police <laughs> thought Chantel did a munt on his cock, but he's like, nah boys, I just washed it down with some Coke Zero. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, and he said something like, "Oh, I don't know why the police were so angry. I thought they would have been like, yeah, good on you, mate. Like, well done.' They actually said that in the article. Oh, man, that's so crazy. So didn't he say funny. something about his bit toey or something? Wasn't there like a quote? Yeah, of, like, oh, she, yeah. I was at the train station. She was a bit toey, so I just decided to let her have something or something like that. Toe-y. Well, that's the thing. So they didn't actually know each other before they both rocked up to the train station. Nah. They literally just met yeah. up, had a public like sesh, and then yeah. just parted ways. This... And, then, and then he's just bragging about the whole thing to news.com why this bitch is getting arrested. This so quote hard. is great. Staff at Wollongong Station then found a large and disgusting liquid mess on the floor, which they originally thought was urine, but it would have been coke and cum. <laughs> which you know, everyone, is has a, everyone has a rum and coke. This guy's done a cum and coke. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck. That's amazing. See, this is the kind of shit that we spend 20 minutes trying to make radio safe. We go, fuck it, it's a podcast one. I wasn't having a piss. I spilt my Coke. And go look at it. It's just Coke, (laughs) Brennan said. (laughs) Give it a taste. Oh, Brennan. I didn't spill it. I was cleaning myself up, he told officers. Don't even tell officers that. Idiot. Deny that shit. See, anytime I hear a story that starts with Brennan and and... What's it? Brennan and Chantel. I'm like, oh yeah, that's public sex for sure. (laughs) (coughs) Um, All right, we'll get to our last uh, question here. I'll head on out. No, no, stay, man. This is the this is the life of us. I'll be a regular uh, guest on the podcast. Mike is so used to being told to fuck off. (laughs) 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 Um, All right, where are we? Oh yes, this is what I was telling you about, Mike. Ah. Uh, My girlfriend has a weird fetish, and it's more awkward than you think. What's that noise? Oh, it's the fucking news article. All right. That was just Brennan telling officers that he put coke on his dick in the back. This email is from Tyler. um, And fuck, this is a good one. This is a banger. Long time listener, big fan. My name's Tyler. I'm 18. I still live with my parents and got into my first relationship with a solid 10 out of 10. Don't read the article. Just let let it happen. You'll ruin the surprise. Uh... Got into a relationship with a solid 10 out of 10 a bit more than three months ago. I'm a bit of a nerd and way out of her league. So I think she's out of his league. Ooh, she's um, a 10. So yeah, <coughs> yeah he's so a he's a 3 because he's my fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a bit of a nerd and sh- Mike looked at you then like hey that's mean your fans are listening to this <laughs> <laughs> yes they are they know this is the running that, joke that's why they listen to this I'm not saying this. that I'm a 10 I'm, they're I'm listening just... to this on a Saturday night right now because they've got fuck all off <laughs> that's not true, <laughs> that's not true. Um, <laughs> stop being you're so way nice. too nice for my podcast man um uh I'm a bit of I'm a bit of a nerd and way out of her league, so naturally I'm fucking stoked to be with her. Everything is working brilliantly between Sarah and me. She has a great character. We both we both play video games. She's smart, and my parents fully accepted her as their daughter-in-law. Jeez, you're moving fast, man. Recently, the subject of sex came up, and she told me she would like to do more adventurous stuff like power play. I don't mind at all. The conversation quickly turned awkward, though. After she tiptoed around the issue of her diaper fetish... Oh no, abort, sir. Get out of there. <laughs> he Run. Inject. Uh, her diaper fetish and uh, what she's into is ABDL, adult baby diaper lover. Does she poo in the diapers or um, does she just... Well, we're going to get to that. Ooh. I'm trying to deal with it. My, <laughs> my mum found my girlfriend's diapers and wants to talk with me. Um, anyway, blah, blah, blah. Fucking where? Wait, is that what happened? No, no, that was he wrote that at the top of the email for some reason. He tried to clickbait me. Anyway, uh, here we go. I tried being supportive and I told her I love her no matter what. <laughs> nah, false. And that <laughs> otherwise you wouldn't be emailing me. I uh, love her no matter what, and she could tell me anything. We proceeded to look at her secret Tumblr containing all sorts of ABDL porn of what is essentially adults using diapers fully, which must be shitting. See, I've heard of the diaper fetish. Where they'll just wear them and and act like a baby, but I didn't know they actually shit in them. Sick, <clears throat> as in yuck sick. No, nah, nah, like no, Mike's no. like fuck yeah. <laughs> no, oh, that's yeah, sick as in ugh. No. That's sick. Nah, sure, Mike, mate. Have you, got a, you. have you got a diaper on him? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> under his short shorts. Actually, I haven't seen you go to the bathroom for a while. <laughs> <laughs> he carries one with him. Um, 
Uh, yeah. She Okay, so, after a long back and forth of me reassuring her, Sarah told me that she basically wants me to ban her from using the bathroom, force her to use her diaper, and then have sex with her. Oh! oh while she wears a shitty diaper! Have you ever thought, like... Back in, like, the 1500s, like, before there was showers and toilet paper, like, people used to have sex. Yeah. That's gross. <laughs> oh, shit. There was no toilet paper back then. Yeah, so no. Like, oh, Wait, what did they... They didn't wipe their ass? Well, they probably just, like, had a dip in the they, local Surely pot, they'd have something. But not... A rag? Mm, I don't know. You tell me. A shit rag. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Really? <laughs> I don't know. Yes, of course. Toilet paper was invented at some point, which means yeah. before that... Yeah, I knew. Yeah. Googling it. Eventually what? someone Is... said... Oh, I mean, yeah, we, we were fucking gorillas. And gorillas don't wipe assholes. and fuck. They just fuck. Yeah. What did people I'm use just saying before that's toilet gross. paper? So really, what you're trying to say is, Mike, that diaper fetishes were just cool back in the day. It was standard. No, I think that's weird, but maybe that's the evolutionary reason people have them. Because, like, we're used to, like... I don't know. Anyway. Uh, Sponge on a stick. Ooh. Mm. That actually sounds practical. The Romans used to. That's like yesterday when we were talking about... You don't have to get your hand as close. That's like when we were talking about wet wipes We were talking about... uh, We know a guy who only uses wet wipes to wipe his ass when he shits. What a fucking baller. And (laughs) we were just like saying that like how we're not on wet wipe money. (laughs) No. Like, I can't afford to shit that expensively. Because I buy wet wipes to clean my shoes and I'll go through like one a month and every time I buy one it's like four dollars. That's... This is true. I find this so funny. Lewis carries round every single day wet wipes in his backpack and one day I found them in there I was like hey man why do you have wet wipes you don't have a baby <laughs> and he was like yes I do I've got these babies you're like it's for my, it's shoes. my shoes and sometimes <clears throat> no kidding we'll just be having a chat in the studio and he'll just pull out his wet wipe and go continue and just start <laughs> wiping down his shoes and then he just like puts the wet wipe in the bin and then looks at his shoes and go all done well, I, what do you want me to do? I take care of shit. They're like $200 for nice yeah. Nikes, man. I'm going to look after them. Yeah. You with your dirty vans. I know. Walk around like some kind of animal. <laughs> bloody Mike and his sketches. I'm wearing Nikes. I know. I know, I'm but you're Nikes totally too. the type of person. Shit, look how much so shit he is. We're all wearing Nikes and he pretends that we're wearing vans and sketches. Yeah, but you own vans and I Mike's personality it, it wears sketches. <laughs> 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 I don't even know what that is. Sketches. You don't know what sketches You said are? it on the show the other day and I laughed, but I didn't know what it meant. I just you do a sympathy laugh. <laughs> it's like the worst... You've it, seen it. It's like lamer than a Dunlop bully. Sketches. What's wrong with Dunlop bully? Sketches. Yeah, I knew it. See? Uh, What's wrong with Dunlop I don't bully? own a pair of Okay, honest, oh, honest opinion on these shoes. Hmm. They're like Crocs, but... Oh, no. Full, yeah. They're like try-hard Nikes. They're women's, yeah. I think they actually used to be no, a lot No, they used to be lamer. way worse. Now they just look like Yeezys. Yeah, true. They actually look alright now, but the, the the it's more the concept of wearing a sketcher I could never do. Nah, no way. I've, ne- I don't, I've never... I don't know. I've These never ones. These are mint. Okay. What do you think of them? Yeah. Mm. yeah. They, they don't look that lame anymore. I generally just wear Nike and Converse. You know those, like, New Balance, like, white shoes that, like, yeah. nose used to wear? Yeah, they used to look like similar to that. Anyway, right. guys, we're talking about wearing shoes. We need to talk about wearing diapers. Yeah. It's much more important. Um, where are we? Uh, I told her quite directly that I'm not interested in putting my dick anywhere near a used diaper. That's dangerous, man. Especially for a girl. If it gets in her pussy, that's an infection. Mm. Um, especially if she went number two. She convinced me to try it out before I judge. Dude, this girl must be so fucking hot. Like, she must be so hot. Telling you, man, if... If Miranda Kerr was like, yeah, no, fuck me in my shitty diaper, I'm like, no, no, thank you. I'm with Johnny Depp. I'm out of here. Yeah, fuck that. She convinced me to try it out before I judge, so I reluctantly proceeded to buy a pack of diapers and a dummy at the supermarket. What he bought him? <laughs> he paid for them. Oh man. Uh, so he's wasting his money so she can I shit on his ho- dick. The whole point. <laughs> Of the the fetish was that you're you're in con- oh, I guess that is the fetish. That yeah, he's, he's in control of the but, whole thing. So she wants him to to be a man and be like, put on these diapers, you baby. Do you call her a slut? Some no, she that. wants to be the baby. That's yeah, so that's what going. I mean. She yeah. wants him to dominate her, but you wouldn't call a baby. Well, a she'd whore. call him daddy. Yeah, which is fine. <laughs> but what does he call her? Put that on, sweetie. You infant. <laughs> you Not infant. good. 
No, yeah. there are no disrespectful words for a baby, Mike. Any suggestions? Mm. Really. <laughs> Mike's like, I'm regret coming in here. I'm regretting coming in here. A little bit. <laughs> Do you reckon this hinders your image? A bit. Yeah. <laughs> I have a really clean image. Like I do a lot of like my I all my stuff's like safe for work. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm yeah. here to put diaper shit all over that image. <laughs> um. <laughs> anyway, where are we? I keep losing my place. Uh, I reluctantly bought. We're, bought at, we're at work. Bought a pack of diapers. <laughs> Jeez, you wouldn't think so. Uh. Uh, and a dummy at the supermarket. I invited her around the next day in an attempt to be open-minded and a good boyfriend. No, you're being beyond a good boyfriend. She's being a shit girlfriend, literally. I'm not going to get into too much detail, but it was bad as I expected it to be. Dude, he did it! That's so she great. only went number one. I manned up about it and finished the job. Oh. Yuck. How Although do you it... finish the job? <laughs> oh. Although I didn't right. particularly enjoy it, she seemed happy. Mark my words, I'll never come in a piss. <laughs> <laughs> I would never finish the job. I want to see that as an inspirational quote with Luke's head and some clouds. I would never come in a piss. <laughs> Put that in the podcast group on Facebook. <laughs> there is new DP. Uh, I, th- I threw away the used diaper... And stored the rest of them in a lockable drawer. I hid the key but under my bedside table. Big mistake. Big fucking mistake. See, you know what? What gets me is that diaper is like in the trash somewhere and then it gets taken to a tip. And that'll never degrade because diapers don't degrade. So one day, in like a cold murder case or whatever, some investigator is going to find a, ba- a baby diaper with piss and cum in it and be like, boys, I've got to leave. <laughs> And they're going to track you down, and you're going to be the piss cum suspect. Oh, yuck. <laughs> so and disgusting. people, the only person who won't be a suspect will be me. Because <laughs> <laughs> be the that cops image. will be like, well, he said, mark my words, that he would never come in a piss. <laughs> 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 Alright, uh, this is where it gets more awkward. Since I still live with my parents, my mum sometimes goes into my room, although she's not supposed to. Yesterday, she was looking for a fucking house. She was looking for a missing sock in my room and did not only discover the key to one of my drawers, she also unlocked it in which I hid the diapers. Now she wants to have a talk. Because she is concerned about my bladder problem. That's, those are her words, I guess. Yeah, because you can't assume no. that your son... You can't assume that it's... That this mother obviously loves the girl. Mm. So she's not like, it's not my bloody future daughter anymore. She doesn't have a weird fetish. It's my son. Yeah, you would. That makes sense. I mean, if you find condoms, you're like, oh, he's being sexually active. I should tell him to be safe. Yeah. But if you find diapers, you don't think, oh, my, my, my son. You don't think fetish. You think my son's infection. forcing his lovely girlfriend to shit in that so he can have sex with yeah. her. Yeah. Fuck. So, not only do I have to somehow figure out how to sexually satisfy my girlfriend, even though I'm not aroused by diapers, but I also have the choice between. Pretending to have bladder problems and getting dragged to a doctor to have unnecessary tests done, or telling my mum that my girlfriend is into diaper sex and making things permanently awkward at the dinner table. I fucked up big time. What do you think? <laughs> Should I change my identity and move continents? Have a shit one in a diaper. <laughs> and here's, here's the photo for confirmation. Oh. I'm going to put this in the, in the Facebook group. Oh man! So this so is real. Fucked. These are the diaper. It's a picture of the diapers and the key and a note that says Lewis Spears with the date. I'll put it in the. But Facebook you can't group. make that up anyway. No, well, you, like, just, you, well, no you could, way. but you wouldn't. No, you would never want that out. Have you kept the person anonymous? Yeah, he's given a fake name. Oh my god! That's I, so. Funny. Wait. So what was the question? The question is. What does he Should do I move with continents? His, what does he do with his mum? Because his mum thinks he's pissing himself. How do you explain? How do you explain diapers? I mean, easy for me. I'd say, oh, they're for a video for YouTube. Mm. I can I can say that with anything. My mum found a glass crack pipe in my locker, and I and I genuinely was telling the truth. And I was like, oh no, it's for a video. And she was like, oh okay, I thought you were doing meth. That's fine. <laughs> I could, I could have been doing meth for for eighteen months now. Yeah. Mum would have no idea. Yeah, shit. What do you do? I mean, I would know. I would never come in a piss. 
But <laughs> what would you do, Mike? I don't would know. you just tell the truth, or would I'd you like no, no, no way? Are you that cool with your mum that you would just be like, yeah, oh, no, man? I wouldn't tell her like that. I did it. You'd I'd say, just she, say oh, she likes to like do do a poo in a diaper. Like that's her. Thing. No, no, you wouldn't. No, say that. but you would at least the the very minimum because you want to. St- I think this guy wants to stay with this girl. Oh, I just break up with her. Yeah, that's you know, what I would You still do. have to explain but the, the diapers thing. with your mum. I just say, I'd break up with her and then I'd say, hey mum, the reason for yeah. the diapers is that my I like ex that. was like shitting in them and I felt nah. weird about it. If you, if your yes, girlfriend no, 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 no. shitting in a diaper... I wouldn't even... I, I, but here's the thing, no, he, does, say, he doesn't want to break up with her. That's I would say, thing. I'll do that break up with her, I wouldn't even say the shitting thing. I would say, I would just lie, a little bit of a lie and go, oh... Like, yeah, but I broke up with her. She was into this diaper stuff. She wanted to wear that. I wouldn't say that she yeah, did I'd I would just say, pretend oh, like, that she had a diaper fetish, but he, just, that's it. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't bother to... Because that, that's weird enough. Yeah, if, and, if you're breaking up with her, tell your mum the just, truth, apart minus the sex. Say she left him at my house so I could think about it, I thought about it, and decided to break up with her. Yeah. But, boys, he doesn't want to break up with her. So... Yeah, you're going to have to move continents where diapers are... Is there any country in which wearing a diaper as a full-grown adult is acceptable? Yeah, Japan, mm. when you're 80. <laughs> mm. Should we ask MDV, the audio producer? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that'll get us fired. <laughs> um, oh yeah, God, I don't know what you tell your mum. I would... Firstly, he said he's 18, so you might be in school. If it's for school, I would say I'm helping my friend with a video. Pro- but the thing is, they were locked. That's the thing. If you lock something in a cabinet and it's the only thing in there, mum sus. If it was for a video, I, I would leave, leave those diapers on my desk. Yep. So I don't forget them. But they're locked away. You've, it's because you've been weirdly... You know what? Because these are shame diapers. Yeah. These are shameful diapers. If your mum had a found... Uh, open public diapers, then it's easier to explain. Mm. She's found you. Yeah, that's the thing. They're hidden. If if they were open, it's less embarrassing. Shouldn't have hidden them away. I bet I. W- I mean, I wouldn't have even bought them. So you, you know what? You should have asked yourself this question that you're asking us now when you were in Coles buying Do... a dummy and fucking diapers. Yeah. The question you should. You've have already asked... gone too far into this. Yeah. To come back, which the point where now you're so deep, you kind of just have to tell the truth. You walked into Coles and you should have asked yourself, do I want to come in a piss? <laughs> and mark my words, you don't want to come in a piss. <laughs> Wait, tell the truth. Or bend the truth. No, if you're staying with her, you cannot tell the truth. If you're breaking up with her, uh, break up with her, I then tell the truth. I can't even think of a lie that explains why you'd put diapers in a cabinet. As a as a grown, adult. the only thing I can suggest is say that it was for a, it was for a video that my friend is oh. doing, and I was embarrassed about it, so I thought I would lock them away. Say you were thinking about having a baby, but you decided not to, but you were preparing. Or say that's that, still bad. Yeah, but it's better than who, that. Yeah, but who <laughs> buys diapers first? That's not the first thing you buy, is it? You yeah. get, like that's that's like at Stock least up. nine months premature. Yeah. I guess. I think... You don't go, oh, we had a bit of a pregnancy scare, so we just thought we'd start building the crib and get some <laughs> diapers. You know what, guys? Email me at podcast at com. What the fuck should this I'm guy stumped. do? I'm stumped. I've done a few of these fucked up questions. This, and this is the one first one that's got me. Has just been... I've got nothing, because I can't even think of a plausible situation that isn't to do with a weird fetish as to why you would have... Locked up Locked diapers. up diapers. I can't think of a situation that's like... Just normal, but yeah. anyway, um, yeah, I got nothing. Oh, hey man, sorry, just, sorry, do, just sorry. doing a podcast. All good. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, sorry, no two worries. Two seconds. Two seconds. <laughs> this is the danger. You can go out if you want. This is the danger of doing How long doing is left this shit. On the podcast. Uh, not long. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna end it. We're there. gonna have to end it there, guys. I mean, I didn't want to end it on this note of a failure. This is the first time I have failed at miscellaneous bit at the end. I've, but this is truly the most fucked up question. Um. Tyler, don't you dare never email me again. You better fucking keep me updated on this situation. I want I want a week by week. Every time something happens, you send me an email. <laughs> We're all in this together now. And then every you've, time... You've come in a piss and your punishment is keeping me updated. <laughs> I want to be updated too. I'm coming <laughs> back <don't>. on. <laughs> I'm going to come back on the podcast and solve this. Because uh, I, I feel like I've started this and I don't want to quit. 
All right, guys, we've got yeah. a week to solve this. Send me in your suggestions. What should this guy do? Um, I will post in... But you know what? Put it in the, the Spearhead Sundays Facebook group. It's Spearhead Sundays... Uh, I think... What's it called? I can't even remember what it's called. Yeah, the Spearhead Sundays podcast group. Look it up. Join the group. Send your suggestions in there. Don't email me because I'll just put it in the group. Otherwise, I'll get spammed. All right? Uh, and that's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining me, Luke, and right. Mike for the end. No worries, man. Uh, uh, I'll see you guys at Luke's show in a couple of weeks. And, uh, yeah. And we're going to better do a radio show. I'll see you then, too. I'll see you then. Yep. Um, where else will I see you? Um, um, fucking everywhere. Probably see you... Out in the corridor. At yeah, your, uh, at your uh, birthday party later. Yeah. Oh, I'll drop you off at your car later. So yeah. I'll see you in the car. Sweet. Yeah. We, you might, guys... we might do a couple gigs together soon as well. Yeah. Oh, I, won't do you you regret... I won't see you guys do you at regret... the gigs. I don't um, do, do you regret inviting Mike in for the end? Uh, Just now? Nah, I, I, I enjoy you guys tarnishing of, his image. You guys thinking diapers. of going to Coles later? Yeah, I need oh, to get I'll some see diapers. You at Coles. <laughs> yeah. um, I might get sushi for lunch. Um, you just, sushi can you or... plug your show so we can end this? <laughs> uh, please come to my show. I'd love to see you there. It's definitely the best show yet, and uh, my bloody sophomore show. Mm-hmm. Um, get down. I'm coming to everywhere that isn't a shithole and a couple of shitholes. I'm doing Adelaide. Don't worry, I didn't forget about you. <laughs> I'm doing Adelaide in Canberra. Um, so where yeah. can they get tickets? LukeKidgel.com slash shows. And what's your motto? Mark my words, people. (laughs) Come to my show and never come in a piss. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, see you next week. Have a shit one.